a word does not become a world until you add an L. Many of the creation stories teach that the world was created through a word or sound. The New Testament says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the cosmology of the Hopi, the Sun God and Earth Goddess chant life into being. The Hindu scriptures teach us that Om is the sacred syllable from which the entire universe was created. In fact, the word universe means one phrase. To shamans, the ability to name things gifts them with godly power, the power to invoke supernatural beings. Once named, a thing is rejoined to its essence, to its primal state. In naming things, a shaman learns from them and absorbs their essence, their word, their power. Carlos Castaneda writes, Words are formidably powerful and important. They are the magical property of those who possess them. Words hold a tremendous amount of power. They affect our relationship with others, as well as what we end up creating in the world. And they are powerful tools for transforming the energy we project. Virtually every sentence that a person utters or understands is a brand new combination of words appearing for the first time in the history of the universe. Words are like ripples of intent and many ancient cultures intuitively knew this. The Navajo people have a saying, may you walk in beauty. Essentially it means don't say anything to another person unless it will create beauty in their life. Pierre Bonnars writes, speech is the art and source of life but also a science containing all the secrets and mysteries of the human condition. According to the Fula people of the Sahara, God has created nothing greater and more operative than the Word. The Word takes part in creating the things we claim to describe. In Syria, magical formulas allow the overcoming of demons by means of their names. In ancient Egypt, words were considered to have so much power that often a metaphor was used in the place of the actual word. It was thought that in the wrong hands, the energy of a potentially destructive word would manifest physically. Likewise, the Tetragrammaton is used to represent the Hebrew name of God because the true name is considered sacred. Language is the emanation of God. For the word is the word and the word is God, remarked Victor Hugo. Written letters were symbols of the Logos power. That is the power to create the world by means of words. That is why the 50 letters of the Sanskrit alphabet appeared on the necklace of skulls worn by the Kalama, perhaps the oldest goddess of creation. The idea that words hold a magical power is contained within the incantation Abracadabra, which comes from the Aramaic phrase Abracadabra, which literally means, I will create as I speak. Certain languages seem to be endowed with an acoustic creative ability that other languages don't have. Hebrew and Sanskrit, for instance, are considered holy languages and have been shown to create sacred geometrical shapes when spoken into a certain type of medium. Interestingly, the original language systems didn't have vowels. Hebrew is considered a consonantal language, meaning that it is made up of consonants and not vowels. The true Kabbalah is a spoken tradition, and that is because the sounds and vibrations of the vowels hold the real power. The consonants are like filters which define the parameters of the power coming through. By not writing out the vowels, the language keeps the most powerful words secret. The biblical story of the Tower of Babel tells how man was cut off from the universal language. According to the works of the English scholar L. Austin Waddell, all languages began in ancient Mesopotamia. L. Austin Waddell. But this guy has proven beyond any shadow of a doubt that all of civilization was started by Aryans, and that King Sargon was an Aryan, and that his son Menes, who was the uniter of Upper and Lower Egypt in the First Dynasty, right. was an Aryan, and they invented language. In fact, he proves that they began in Mesopotamia fully developed. There's no progress from primitive to advanced languages. They begin with advanced languages. They created Sanskrit. He proves it beyond any shadow of a doubt because he takes the king's lists from India who were definitely Aryans huh. and, and proves that the earliest Aryan kings were exactly matched up to the king's lists from Samaria. So all of these languages, Akkadian and, and Chaldean and Egyptian and uh, the Indo-European languages, Sanskrit, they are all Aryan. And this is the great thing that they don't want to be discovered. They don't want this out.